Okay, so this is insane, but what you are going to see is a conversation unend edited with uh, the one and only, the legend, Janne Schaffer. If you are uh, Swedish or Scandinavian, I think, Scandinavian, you absolutely know who Janne Schaffer is. Uh, he's a super legend, a, a guitar wizard, an institution here in Sweden. I bet that a lot of you out there, most of you I think, uh, outside of Scandinavia has heard him play because he plays on 50 ABBA songs, something like that. He talks a little bit about it in the conversation. When I contacted him and we decided on a... Uh, and he wanted to do the conversation and we decided, decided on a date, I immediately thought of, of like not talk about ABBA, not talk about Ted thought and the other stuff that he talks about all the time. And and he should because he should be really proud about those recordings and those artists are huge. But for me, when it comes to his music, I love the first recordings that he did. He's probably a better guitarist today. I mean, something happens during the 50, 60 years you are on the circuit, but the first recordings are so vital, so important for not only the Swedish music and Swedish uh, jazz fusion, but it has become collectible records. So from a, re a record collecting perspective, it's so cool. So we talked about Pop Workshop, Ablution, uh, Opus 3 and Friends, Svenska Lød AB, and his solo uh, records also. And he he uh, tells tells us uh, and tells us anecdotes uh, of those recordings. And for me to be able to share this conversation in English so that everyone can enjoy it is a dream come true, really. So without further ado, I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, here's Janne Schaffer. Enjoy. So, uh, I'm here, I'm sitting here in my basement with one of my absolute heroes, uh, Janne Schaffer. Welcome to my basement, Janne. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Uh, for the few of uh, you out there that doesn't know uh, who Janne is or know about Janne, please, could you just uh, briefly uh, pre pre do a presentation of yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, I was born 1945 in Stockholm and I uh, always been living in Stockholm. Uh, I had two very... Uh, my parents were studying music. My father studied violin and my mother was a piano teacher. And I uh, <clears throat> grew up in a suburb to Stockholm called Blackberry. And there uh, was a lot of music in my home. It was My mother had piano lessons. And uh, 1957... I uh, I was going into school, Black Bay's high school, and um, I built my first guitar, acoustic guitar, in the in the school, That's and I was twelve years old. And then I start. I found out that this is my instrument. So then I started playing acoustic guitar from the very beginning. Then I went over to electric guitar in the sixties. And I played with a couple of Swedish bands. Uh, the first one was Ted and the Caracas. And then I played with uh, Sleepstones. Yeah. And then I played with uh, uh, Sleepstones, changed their name to Attraction. And then 1968, uh, I started touring with a couple of famous Swedish artists. From the beginning was Gunnar Wiklund and Eva Rydberg. And then I started a group of my own called Opus 3. Yeah. And uh, uh, I graduated in 1966 in school. And uh, I wrote my uh, essay from uh, Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. And then I started four years at the university. And then 1970, I started as a professional musician. And from the very beginning, I was a session musician, played on records. 1973, I recorded my first solo album. 
And then I have two careers. Uh, one is as a session musician, and the other one is like a soloist and a, a songwriter. I write music myself for all my albums. And I recorded, I think, around 14 solo albums and a little other, and a lot of music I played on. Around 50 tracks on that band played on uh, a Swedish guy called Teddy Adestad, which was from the beginning produced by Bjorn and Benny. It was, he recorded 91 songs and I played on 69 of them. Jeez. And then I recorded with uh, uh, Andreas Follenweider from yep. Switzerland. Yes. I recorded, uh, I've been sampled by. American artist KRS One ah, okay. from an album that was record. I recorded one album in Hollywood in 1977 with the producer was Bruce Botnick, who worked with the Doors and the musicians were Jeff, Mike, Steve, and their father Joe Pacaro and Bjorn Lind, and uh, that was the record they sampled, and uh, also a female. Uh, Rap artist uh, Lady Rage, for example, also one of my tunes. And uh, lately, uh, uh, Anderson Park found a tune from my first album mm. and sampled that for Christina Aguilera's latest album. Oh shit! And uh, that uh, what, what song was was that that they uh, sampled? Uh, 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 no registration. Okay, is the name of the tune, and uh, he sampled uh, the introduction of it. And uh, Christina Aguilera's track on her first album is "Sick of Sitting." Oh, okay. So, so uh, that's awesome. I'm very honored, and I've done a lot of other things. I'm going touring, and I started yeah. a band together with Lasse Oberg, Lake Burner Band. I can talk. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. You you have been super productive and one of the absolute biggest musicians in in uh, Sweden and I should say in my opinion one of the best guitarists at least in Europe uh, for me when it comes to to listening to guitar and ha having his own sort of guitar sound and you're out touring now with sort of the Swedish heritage am I correct or um... yeah yeah my uh, I call it my music story which yeah. includes uh, my own compositions and also music that are recorded with other artists that yeah. I play on a couple of Teddy Adestadi and a couple of Abba and Björn Jusson Lin who I worked with for 43 years and he died nine years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll we'll hopefully we'll come back to to uh, a lot of them. I, I I just I remember when I when I uh, got this I bought this when it came out in 2012 okay. I think it was. And okay. I've read it many times because it's it's so beautiful and it's filled with amazing anecdotes. And I felt right away when I when I read it that uh, if I could only have like a half an hour sitting down with you drinking a cup of coffee and and talking <laughs> about this, it would be awesome. But what I what I um, noticed right away was that this wasn't offered in English. It's only in no. Swedish, right? Yes. And I thought that was super strange because the anecdotes and your story is so it goes so much further than just Sweden. It it goes mm -hmm. everywhere in the world. I mean, you've been on the big stage on Montreux, uh, if that's mm -hmm. how you pronounce it, in 1980, playing with some of the best musicians uh, ever. So this conversation hopefully uh, will will start a little bit in the uh, beginning and see how how far we come. But I've gathered mm. a lot of records and I, I know you have gathered a lot of records so um maybe we'll just show records and talk a little bit about them if that's okay with <laughs> okay. you yeah yeah absolutely. absolutely is it okay if i i start yeah you do that you do that uh, you you briefly uh mentioned um one of the the first groups that you were in was opus tree and friends yeah yes uh, and I got this. This is an original press. Um, I got okay. this not too long ago. I had a reissue for many years. And I think this is a brilliant and, uh, dare I say, under a little bit underrated record in your catalog because I don't hear people talk about this uh, much, but I think it's a brilliant record. 
Uh, how was it to to record this? Was 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 it nervous or? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it it, it uh, it's a lot of friends of mine on, yeah. on that record. Uh, it was produced by Klaus Hjärnstam Club, yeah. he's called, and uh, it was on a small uh, record, Swedish company called uh, Sonet. Yep, and uh, uh, I had started a trio. With Ola Brunket, which I met in uh, um, when I I started to play with on touring with uh, Gunnar Wicklund, I played with Grapes of Breath. And ah, okay. Ola was Ola was the drummer in that group, and before that, he had uh, played with a, a Swedish group called Science Poption. Okay, and. Uh, uh, and the bass player from that group was Björn Stolt, and we we uh, we formed a group called Opus Three. I don't know why, but I mean we had I had listened to Cream and such such things, and but we we wanted to do um, uh, some vocals, so so I wrote some tunes, and I think Club wrote some lyrics, and then I invited some friends of mine. And for instance, beyond Schiffs. Yeah. But we we the, I didn't want to use their names. So we he his he had figured names. Yeah. So his name is Troy Dunner. <laughs> it's awesome. And uh, uh, and it's uh, it's a guy called Jan Öner. He's singing vocals. He was in a group called Hounds. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The story is also. Uh, no, uh, club is um, also vocals, and uh, I, I must say, I'm doing one vocal myself. Oh, okay. I don't okay. remember on which tune, but it's it's a blues. It's, I, it's I try awesome I try record. to sing. Yeah, uh, I really like Thank it, you. and as you said, it's it's I, I can hear the influences by uh, Cream. It's it's uh, very much like uh, it. The entire vibe of the record, I feel, is is a lot of of Jack Bruce sort of. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful record. Is this the first time that you work with uh, Jason Lind? Also, yeah, yeah, it is. I don't remember that he was on my, on the first album, uh, okay. that album actually, but we. Um, uh, I mean, his name is on it, and he's playing on it, so. So I have no memory from that because uh, I okay. remember what I remember with working with him is comes a little later, but uh, 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 also had listened. I was influenced by Gary Burton and yeah. his Larry Coriel, his yes. band. I heard, heard uh, Gary Burton's uh, quartet in the uh, Swedish concert hall. Oh, okay, and I I liked the. Uh, so I play General Moyes while they plan. That's a tune I, it's a cover what that I okay. tried to play on, which they played. I liked it very much. Ah. So, mm. have you always uh, have you always be, uh, been um, influenced by by jazz artists? Because I feel like uh, one on one leg you have your sort of your rocking tunes, and then on the other leg mm. you have almost like. Uh, uh, a sort of humorous uh, fusion jazz. Um, yeah, I I I listen to both. I mean, it's uh, if I just should play rock and, and blues, it it limits your expression. I think so. I I I was uh, in the beginning of the seventies. I was playing in the Swedish yes radio jazz group. Oh, which okay. was fantastic, yeah. And I, so I played with a lot of, of composers who, who written music, which was uh, uh, somewhere between rock and jazz, you yeah. know. I, I played with uh, Carla Bley, Palle Mikkelborg, yeah. A.E. Tillin, and a lot of, and I played together with A.E. Tillin for a while because he was fantastic. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I don't like to limit my expressions. I I, I like to play. Just a couple a couple of weeks ago, I played with a rock group, and yeah. then I played with the techno group, and then I play with not so much today with jazz musicians because I think 
today it's the music is developing i mean i, I like i listen a little bit uh, like uh, to Tay Rypdal, the Norwegian yeah. guitar yes. player. And he has a very special expression when he plays. He's, it's not if you listen to a classical jazz guitarist, he's, he doesn't play like that. He, no. he plays, he uses the elect electricity of the sounds and so on. So, so I, I like to open up the music and so not limit myself to, to special things. And I I think that that gives me very much freedom to to write music, and, and so I include many uh, ideas from both jazz and pop and rock and folk music as well. Yeah. Actually, did you? Uh, I mean, you, I I, I um, uh, listened to an interview with you, and you you talked about uh, fusion. It was that. Was fusion an expression uh, early on, or was that something that developed over time? Did you talk about fusion in 19, like 70, 71, or was that a little bit later? No, that was, that was in the beginning of the 70s. I listened to that very much. Uh, and I think the first fusion, real fusion I heard was with the Gary Burton in 1968. I think he played in, in uh, yes, at the Philharmonics in, in the Swedish Concert Hall. And then I listened to the Mahavishni, yeah, John McLaughlin, and he was fantastic. And uh, actually, I took, I, I, I brought one of the yeah. <laughs> John McLaughlin. I, I, um, I imagined with your guitar sound that you had a lot of influence with, with um, John McLaughlin and what he did in the in the beginning of the seventies. This is a masterpiece of a blood record. I, I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have it as well. Yes, it's insanely good. I, I, I'm gonna. Um, Continue on with this one because uh, uh -huh. I think that this is this is the reissue. I wish I had the original press of this, but yeah, you, you have. Do you have an original press of this? Yeah, I have one, but I can't say it, it, it has. When we did that recording, it was fantastic. It's just a lo rather mm -hmm. long story. I can tell you about what what happened with that one it, it was you didn't expect something it was just made for fun okay for musicians fun and uh my my original is uh, you you can't listen to that i think it's i have it but it, it's it's not very well okay. in very good shape I yeah think it's so. been loved uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much. And but it was uh, I had a friend. I met a friend in when I recorded a lot of things in in the uh, at the Swedish radio radio hall and uh, uh, Swedish radio. And uh, there was a guy called Janne Forsell. He was a comedian, but he worked and he did program with with um, Kjell Arlinge, uh and that was they was called Hemma Hus. And they were doing th things in the, on the radio that wasn't allowed, and they was they were broadcast very late at, in the evening between eleven and twelve or something, because they they said and did so crazy things. And but he really loved music, and he was so uh, 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 he was uh, he he didn't like that Sweden in Swedish radio they didn't play uh, music he liked so uh, um, uh, this he was very disillusioned so he said I'm gonna pay do a record and I decide which kind of music <laughs> you're gonna play awesome. and he hired this is the result uh, he rented again. he rented a studio in Rupafin Studio Three. And uh, the guy who recorded was an engineer, Jet Pankras. He's a very famous uh, Swedish engineer. And we uh, we started recording ten o'clock in the in the night in the evening, cause uh, come a couple of the guys they were working in, in the theater and they had a uh, uh, um, they had a session in, at the theater, so they couldn't come before ten o'clock in the evening. And uh, um, I will see Bent Linkvist, I think he was organ player. He wrote mostly of, of the arrangement. And then Nils Erik Sloan was a drummer. Janne Bergman was a bass player. And uh, 
don't remember all the guys and, and we we started just playing and was a lot of solos and and everything was recording in the night and when we stopped recording at two three o'clock in the morning he mixed everything so seven o'clock in the morning next day the whole record was finished and then he said i'm going to uh, press 100 copies of this one okay. and he's going to sell it at, in the doors he, he didn't have no he didn't have any distributions oh, so it was uh, really uh, so to speak uh, uh, you, you couldn't buy it in, in the shops and so no. so it's a very unique one and then uh, I think uh, Liat Pankam's son he uh, reissued the the, the the record you have there yeah, so I got that as well. Yeah, it's, of it's, it, it sounds uh, amazing, really, and I, I think that uh, it, it strikes me that that uh, Swedish like fusion has a very funky sort of sound to it. Is that correct or? Yeah, it, it was really about the first time we played that kind of music. I mean, we had listened to I had listened to it very much on the radio. And, and Radio Luxembourg, and, and I bought some records, and, and we saw. But in Sweden, we didn't. It, it, we were the pioneers in that kind of style. I think it yeah. was one of the first. And we were no, we didn't. We were no experts in in uh, on that kind of music. But I developed that, and I found. Drum uh, Ola Brunket, he was he could play that very good, and uh, bass player called Stefan Brulund, yeah. and I yeah. formed a group together with Bjorn Eason Lin, and we started to develop more of that kind of music. But at the same time, I was working as a session musician, so I yeah. did quite another thing. I did Ring Ring with ABBA 1973, for instance. So that doesn't. But to be working with music that your uh, uh, experiments yeah. you know uh, it it's uh, it gives you ideas to yeah. Yeah, commercial obviously. music as well was it uh, as fun was this as fun as ring ring by abba uh, yeah uh, two different things yeah. i mean to sit in the studio and improvise that's that's the thing I can do. I mean, uh, that's why I got I got those jobs. I think because yeah, yeah. I, I you couldn't uh, some musicians so the the I've never studied music. I, I learned by myself and uh, and um, and some guys that I knew that have been studying music. They have they were locked into reading music, and I'm not locked into that i can read music not very very well but i can do it and uh, but to be free to improvise and that's what i like very much and then the, you can contribute with some small phrases and some idea musical ideas and so on so that's why and but at the same time i also work with a lot of arrangers uh sven olof waldorf bengt arne Berlin, uh, Michael Sösterdal, Mats Olsson. Mats Olsson was uh, uh, arranging for Lee Hazelwood, for instance. He, oh, he, okay. It's one very, very good record. That, uh, House Safe for Tigers is, yeah. is a very famous one. I don't it's know awesome. if you have it. I don't have it. It's it's uh, iconic in the sort of the collector's market. I have... Um... He, I don't know. I think it was re, uh, released on Viking Records, uh, uh, Requiem for an Almost Lady. I think the record is called, which is awesome. Really, really good. Uh, and Cowboy in Sweden, also the soundtrack. Yeah. Really good. But his Swedish stuff was uh, fantastic, in my opinion. Yeah. That that record, I uh, what, that was recorded... 76 77 or something in in europa film the big studio and uh i didn't know I'd, i have no memories of that recording 
okay. but the guy uh, an English guy Windham Wallis called me and said you're playing on it I don't remember can, can you remember <laughs> something no I'm are you really sure that I'm playing yeah and, and then I got I got both the, the it's on CD and the, it's on vinyl okay. as well and uh, uh, I he said there's one tune called Las Vegas and uh, it's just a guitar solo. It's a long guitar <laughs> solo. Yeah. And uh, he said he used that as an introduction when he did the show with uh-huh. uh, Francis Sinatra in Las Vegas. Ah, cool. I didn't know that. So uh, I hope he re- registered me for the SAMI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You, get, you get steam money. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you know how many songs you are registered on has to be hundreds i i, I think uh, around uh five thousand songs oh my god so, yeah i think i recorded but that that includes around 50 abba songs and yeah. and 60 90 the other start and i've written about three four hundred on, on my own because mm-hmm. i worked with the electric banana band i wrote all the music for them Okay. And uh, but then uh, it's it's a lot of things are recorded in yeah. different so it's not, things. It's not uh, super surprising that you don't remember uh, every no. <laughs> session that you did. I don't remember all my working days. I have to admit that. Uh, I mean, uh, I work at a press, uh, sort of a. Uh, uh, I don't. I, this, the English word escapes me now. Uh, Trickery in in uh, here in Sweden. I don't remember uh, every uh, working day. Um, I brought this also. This is uh, Björn Jason Linds yeah. uh, from Storstad till Grodsborg. Yes. Uh, 1971, maybe something like that. Is this the... the? I, I, I thought that this was the first one that you uh, collaborated with Jason Lind, but uh, obviously no. not. Uh, no. But this was I'm... on Swedish radio, wasn't it? Uh, yes. He, he, he. I mean, he was educated. He went 10 years in the Swedish musical uh, uh, high school, oh, and okay. uh, he he was very well educated. So he he written a lot for the Swedish radio orchestra, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't know him at that time. So so he is not. I didn't. I, do, I didn't play on that one. I don't yeah. think. And he his first record Ramadan. Yeah. Uh, I don't play on that one either. But I, okay. the second one. His second yeah, couscous. album, I play. Uh, couscous, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I saw Ramadan was um, uh, is Joy Vadenius playing on that one? Uh, Kenny or, Håkansson, I think. Kenny Håkansson, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, yeah, I, I revisited this uh, today uh, when I was driving to to work, listening uh, on uh, YouTube. It's um, it's a fantastic record, and the arrangements are uh, super good, like really, really good. Uh, yeah. I haven't really listened to it uh, before. Uh, I feel I feel um, feel bad for only showing my records. Maybe we should. Uh, no, no, no. Go on. I, I think it's better that you I, do it. I, I showed them a little bit, like what I think is chronologically, but I, 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 I yeah. I, I'm not. I mean, you you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Your first solo record that you released. That's my first solo album. Yeah, and, and uh, it... I'm gonna real. Uh, that's what 49 years ago. When next year is 50 years ago. This oh, really? I don't. I can't imagine that. But um, uh, I will reissue that album. Oh, okay. Uh, next year. Yeah. Cool. Uh, with uh, and do a couple of concerts with. I can't do all the tunes from that album, but a couple of tunes from that album I, I'm going to play. I uh, okay. <laughs> I think that uh, Jordbruk's Machine was one of the songs that really opened my eyes to sort of getting a, a interest in music. Uh, I, I remember, I think it was my dad that, that played um, uh, this many, many years ago. And Jordbruk's Machine just blew my mind like okay and music sound like this it was funky well played heavy i mean it has uh, everything doesn't it mm. and that's a big uh, the, on the back flip side uh, uh, you show that's from the recording studio ah, okay 
that that's uh, Studio One in Europe's Europe uh, Studios. That's, and, that's uh, Europa your... Film, Europa Film. And that's my guitar, and and all. They asked me which amp did you use, and it's I think it's shown there. Yeah, it's an Ampeg, isn't Ampeg, it? Ampeg, yeah. Could yeah. be. I used it. I used it at that time. Was it um, like I, I, I guess uh, by this time you had already recorded many, many, many uh, songs. But how was it to to go in and record your own sort of uh, your own record? Was it? Uh, I. I you know, it was like this. I I was recording with a lot of artists and uh, Agneta Feldskog and, and yeah. I was recording in Lasse Berghag and I was recording with... Uh, and I was doing a lot of TV sessions as well. And uh, then uh, Lasse Samuelsson, who was one of the arrangers and orchestra leaders, yeah. he asked me, do you want to do a record on your own? Yeah, so I have some things here. Yeah. And I had some small things uh in in my uh, wardrobe and and uh, i started to recording and uh, on my own i I didn't have any idea of how i mean it's music i like i i I, that actually if you ask me at that time was music i missed Uh, i couldn't listen to through the radio but i would like to have listened to that kind of music on the radio but it was impossible so I did, recorded that, and then um, exactly at that time, when the the album was released, I was touring in Israel. Uh, me and Bjorn Isolin, I was uh, for Rune Gustafsson instead of Rune Gustafsson and Bjorn Isolin instead of Arne Donneris, <laughs> and we played with the Bengt Talberg, Jerry Idel, Egli Hansen, and Bosse Broberg, and with the Leif Strand's uh, choir. Leif Strand was fantastic squad leader, and wow. uh, he had worked. They he had worked together. They were in the same school in the music high school with Bjorn Isolin, so they wow. were friends. So that's why we we were touring in Israel for two weeks. And when I came back to Sweden, I was number one on all charts. Yeah, yeah. And I was very surprised that it was. I, I had no expectation of that. And I stayed at uh, first uh, position in for six weeks, it, and uh, awesome. I was before all the, the music that I recorded with Abba, Järdestal, yeah, Barry Hagen, everything you know, yeah. and uh, it was fantastic. And uh, and I thought now uh, nobody wants to re- <laughs> want me to play on that records, but they it, so I t- told Abba. I can, I will stay. I want to stay to play, uh, still play on your records. So you know, so it doesn't matter. So I recorded and, and um, up till I recorded all at the same time as as I started. Then I started my own group, uh, which is a Swedish. It was called Hörselmat at, in English, ear food, uh, with the Bjorni Sundlind, and. Uh, and we then I also uh, said to myself, now I go, don't have to go on tour with other backing up other artists, which I have done up to then. The last uh, back uh, in in a backing group was with uh, Jerry Williams. Yeah, and he had a sidekick called Thomas Ledin. Okay, he I, play, I played on Thomas Ledin's two first albums. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, so, uh, and it was Lasse Samuelsson as well on the, his uh, he was, record label. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Clover or something like that. For, for Clover, yes. Clover? Yeah. yeah. Well, and so- on, on that, um, on that uh, album, we did uh, three vi- vi- videos, which were okay. supposed to be, have been shown on the Europa Film own. Um, uh, cinemas all over Sweden, ah, okay. and it was uh, like on on the commercials before uh, the movie starts. Mm-hmm. But uh, somebody said it you can't do that, <laughs> so it was it was stopped. Ah. But I still have the the videos. Oh, so I, when the release is coming next year, the new release of Fifty Years Later, I'm going to show them. Ah, We're cool. going to. 
probably going to do a TV program about what happened the yeah. first album 50 years ago and what happened after that and ah. what happened around it. And uh, also that is from that album, uh, um, it's sampled to Christina Aguilera's yeah. uh, latest album. So, yeah. so it, it, uh, no re registration is it's the name of that. Tune that uh, Nelson Park, uh, Anderson Park. Okay, uh, he was a, a producer of that song, so he found it somewhere. I don't. I wonder, still wonder how he found oh, yeah. that <laughs> small introduction. Yeah. Yes, good music just you know finds its way. I uh, hope so. We we talked about this over the phone, uh, and I'm gonna make it my sort of my life goal to find you uh, uh your own copy of this and if anyone has a, a spare copy just let me know and i'll I'll send it to to janne but ablution yeah uh, fantastic record i mean and and one that you don't have in your own collection which, which no. is just insane and a shame <laughs> yeah uh, that's a big memory from from that album i uh of course it was i can tell you the story about around it was a Swedish producer called uh, uh, Anders Henriksson. He's also named as Henkam. Yeah. He worked later later on with with uh, very much with Magnus Uggla. but he had been working working in uh, England with uh, uh, a band called Quite a Mess. Yeah, and in that group, there, there was there was the three of the members on that album. There was. Uh, John Gustafsson, Peter Robertson, and Barry de Sousa. And he told them that uh, he had two good friends in Sweden, Jan Schaffer and Björn Isolin, who st should do a record and ask them, "Could you do you want to play on that record? Ah. To me and Björn Isolin, he said, I have three friends in, in <laughs> England called... Peter Robinson, John Gustafsson, and Barry Sousa, they're going to go record an album and they want you to play on it. <laughs> so we came to the studio, Europa Film num number one, and we, we were very nice guys. And <laughs> I can also say that uh, they are uh, very famous. John Gustafsson and Peter Robinson were two of the original members on. Jesus, the first Jesus Christ Superstar album, okay. Andrew Lloyd Webber. They play on that album. And um, we had no, no music, and they had no music. So we were sitting there looking at each other. We had, and we looked up in, in the control room, and there was Henk, and he was hiding behind the, 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 in the, on the floor, and he said, what's, what's going to happen? So we had nothing. And then Björn Isolin said, I have some little thing that I should play on, on my, for my next al solo album. He said, we can try that. Yeah. And, and that uh, tune is called Third Me to Stroll. I don't know if, okay. if the title is, is there the title, Third Me to Stroll? Uh, maybe he, he changed the, it, uh, yeah, maybe. the title of it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, but we we tried that, and he had re it written down. So he wrote it down, and he noticed that the uh, youngest Olsen and, and Peter that they could read music. So so we discovered, and then we found some things, and then in the end we we got together. We we worked, and and we were creating the music in the studio. We were very that's like improvising. Insane. Yeah, if if you're if you're that kind of musician that you can find music, you can uh, uh, create music immediately, then, yeah. then it's, it's very easy. But not everybody can do that. So, so it was very lucky. And if you listen to it, it I don't know in the, how the hell we could do, do that album. Because it's very complicated. Yeah. And how we could remember it. I, can, I don't think I can play it today. No, okay. But, but we did that in the studio. And on and uh, on the drums is Ola Bronket, and on the percussion is uh, Malanda Gosama as well. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. awesome musicians, and and I feel like uh, it's extremely well produced. Every single sort of instrument uh, is uh, well, uh, very um, 
sort of the, the details of the music or and the uh, instruments are, are uh, amazing. But uh, John Gustafsson, if you listen to Quartermass uh, record that they they released on uh, Harvest, it's nothing like this. It's more heavy, blues oriented. Uh, did the sort of the English musicians they did they play this sort of fusion music, f- funkier fus- fusion music? Or was it just in the in the sort of? Uh, Peter Robinson was involved with Brand X, where uh, yep. Phil Collins played. Yeah. So I think he was little, but uh, John Gustafsson was a fantastic bass player. He, I mean, he could do anything, and okay. he yeah. came from Liverpool. He was friend of of uh, Paul McCartney and John Lennon, I know. And okay. uh, he played with, later on with Roxy Music, and he played on. I went on tour. The year after we recorded this with the, in the States with Sean Phillips, they, they invited me to be a guitar player for that. And that was 1974. And uh, we did 42 concerts in 47 days. It was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Malanda was playing as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that was fantastic. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll ho- I hope I, I can find you a, a copy. I'm pretty good at, at finding uh, records. So so just sit tight and I'll find you a okay. copy. <laughs> Thank you very much. So anyway, uh, yeah. the, ne- the next one, and these are two of my absolute favorite records in my entire collection. So I'm going to show them both is a pop workshop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Volume one and volume two. Uh, I yes. think that they, are in, in, they sound like... T- like two separate uh, records, obviously it's volume one and two, but that's uh, maybe uh, because it's no, not the same uh, lineup. How no. was it to, to record it? How did they end up in Sweden recording this with you guys? Uh, Vlade Kulgovski was yeah. living, he, I think he lives here still. He okay. was from, from, from Poland and yeah. he worked with uh, Thomas Ledin, I, I'm quite sure, for a while. For a short while, and uh, uh, his his friend was Zygmunt Namislowski. He's a very famous saxophone player in uh, Poland. Yeah. And then he wanted to, re- so he Blodek wrote the old music for this, and we improvised. So we, it was, uh, I think, Ola Bronk is playing drums on the first yeah. one. Yes. And is who is the bass player is. Uh, it's it's uh, Stefan Brolund. Stefan Brolund, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I listened to this yesterday uh, all the way through uh, and with the volume two and and it's very sort of um, it feels like keys uh, or heavy, like keys heavy and and uh, you don't get as much um, room on this one like on the second one uh, but i don't know if that's i don't uh, you don't have uh, that many solos on it no but maybe that's a consequence of vlodek being the vlodek uh, is uh, uh, is mostly a record for vlodek and zigbinev yeah. is there because they were they know each other very well so we we were just i think the rest of us is backing them up yeah know. okay I think uh, uh, the, the the saxophone was awesome on, on this also, and then then volume two. What is this? Two or three years later? Two years. Yeah, later? something like that. And then we had a f- fantastic drummer called uh, Tony Williams from My Davis Group, and uh, is uh, the Finnish guy. Uh, what's his call? Uh, Mats Winding. No, no, he, it's not. Uh, Pekka Poyla, I think. Yeah, Pekka Poyla. Yeah, Pekka Poyla. Yeah, yeah, fa- yeah, fantastic. And there's a little bit of a... Uh, is that a story or a rumor or something like that? that yeah. Uh, I, I Billy Cobham was going to... Yeah, be. he was the first... <laughs> he was told that he, he was the first choice, but he did, he couldn't do it. So so Tony Williams came in and said... And he, I mean, Tony Williams, he, he, so, I, I, I was so honored to be play with Tony Williams and, and there was people in from the music school listening to it, sitting in the control room, listening to the re- uh, recordings and and uh, but he suddenly no, uh, suddenly some, I don't know how it came but uh, suddenly 
the the message came into the drum <laughs> more dark drum room and it was very dark suddenly and we should play a tune called Mammoth yeah. and I had the solo on that one and we tried to to practice it and uh, Lodek said let's practice it and um, Lodek uh, or um, Tony just play on the hi-hat tish 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 <laughs> I said, and we noticed something was not <laughs> very happy in that in, in the drum in the drum section. So and they said, let's rehearse it one more time. And it was the same thing. Tish, 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 tish. <laughs> and we played and I read the music and then and they said, let's make a real take. And then on the first day, he exploded. Yeah. It was and I had the guitar solo. So I was I was like flying high up in the sky with the, the backing the drums it was fantastic and uh, so it was it's a live take with the solo and, and oh, shit. He, he never stopped it was fantastic so, cool. so yeah, yeah it's, it's really good on this one if you compare it to other recordings in this time period i i think and and uh and i always when i talk with uh, friends of mine and, and stuff like that and on this, this channel I, I often talk about uh, Tony Williams but it feels uh, a little bit like uh, unfair because Ola Brunkert plays fantastic on this one but yeah, takes all the, the credit but Ola Brunkert is yeah. awesome uh, Ola Brunkert, too. Ola Brunkert it was the, the uh, Ola Brunkert was the, the from the beginning uh, jazz drummer so he he played without farming. I heard. So oh, he was okay. not a pop drummer, but I mean, if you can play, if you're a musician, you should play. Could play. You must play everything. Yeah. It's, it's like that. Um, next one uh, I have is uh, audience uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> one of the most sketchy uh, cover artworks, I guess, uh, in my collection. Perfect for Halloween. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Which uh, now, th this I, when I when I play this the first time, it, it's it's somewhat a, a it feels like a Lasse Orbay sort of record. Maybe it's not, but and then you come to to a tune called Black Salad, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my opinion, I haven't heard you play that heavy. <laughs> such a heavy guitar before uh, on any no. tracks that I've uh, heard. It's a fantastic song, really, yeah. really heavy. It it it, it last last year it was sort of art performance you can speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the whole music we were just uh, playing around in the studio and, and making inventions and and then he asked me, "Can you do something really heavy?" And then I'd listen to Led Zeppelin. Okay, the, I heard Led Zeppelin in. Uh, in the, the, the royal tennis court ah. hall, and, and uh, I tried to imitate <laughs> what okay. how it sounded like, and and I, I also it was uh, I found I, I found it out in the studio. I hadn't it, hadn't written it before. Ah. It and that don't don't do do do, and the, everybody learned it very quickly, and then we recorded it. So. It, it's a forced recording, <laughs> forced Super uh, heavy. composing. Yeah, yeah. It's and I, nice. um, I often uh, tell people like, yeah, it it sounds like this. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You know yeah. how it sounds like? And, it sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, and Uf Anderson is playing sax and flute, and he is one of Sweden absolutely best um, jazz musicians. He is fantastic. Yeah, I played a lot with. He play also played with Abba later on. Uh, who who did you say? Uh, Uff Andersson, the yeah. sex player. Yeah. Bernt Egeblad is also. I mean, I have. Uh, I don't feel uh, feel like there's any clothes I can wear that is cool. But I printed this myself. This is Bernt Egeblad's uh, uh, trio schizo. Uh, so I have to make my own clothes now. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I, have... you, I must ask you, do you have? I don't have it myself here, but do you have the Matt, Matt Winding uh, album? No, Danish Design. No, no, I I think that I had it at one point, but uh, and I tried to f find it because, um, 
but I didn't find it. I had, I also had uh, the Tony Scott record. Aha, uh -huh, you had it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I never had that uh, Tony Scott, but he was a crazy one. And okay. For those uh, uh, who doesn't know who Tony Scott is, he was a clarinet player. Yeah. He was he's a little bit crazier. Okay. Uh, but Matt Winding was not crazy. He was one of, I mean, uh, he came from Denmark, and uh, the the best bass player in in the whole Europe was Nils Henning Ørsted Pedersen. Yeah. I also played with him. Ah, cool. uh, a couple of uh, couple of times, but Matt Winning was coming after Nils Henning, and uh, we recorded an album that's called Danish Designs, and yeah. I I I haven't got that either, but but I think the music on Danish Design is very very good. Okay, he, he wrote the he wrote the music and Shelly Oman is playing and also Ola Brunkert. So if you want to listen to real funky uh, um, fusion music, you can <laughs> if yeah. you can get that. Yeah, I I can recommend it. I'm I'm gonna uh, see if I can find it in a collection, but otherwise I'll I'll uh, yeah. I'll pick it up when I see it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Nils uh, Nils. Uh, I can't. He's sending us. Need sending us to Pedersen. Him. <laughs> he plays up right. With, there's a YouTube clip online. You should you should uh, go go and, and watch that. It's uh, he plays with Oscar Peterson um, and with the Oscar Peterson trio. But he's he's uh, he's playing the bass uh, on a song called uh, "You Look Good to Me." I think it's called. Okay. It's on YouTube. He plays the best sort of bass part I've ever heard it's yeah. insane I get chills just just uh, talking about it um, yeah. yeah it's amazing I play, uh, there is a record uh, where I play with this Henning Örstedt and of course string along with bass here okay. where Rune Gustafsson Jojo Vadenius and me are she playing and uh, the bass player uh, I think it's Ed Thickpen on drums and Miss Henning Ørsted on bass My but God. with the, before that it's the second album with, where we play in harmonies but the first one I did with uh, Rune Gustafsson called Move oh uh, yeah with, yeah I yeah. have that one you have that one yeah because yeah. I'm very proud of that one because that was uh, live recording in the studio that was recorded oh. in Metronome later on Atlantis studio, the same studio as we worked with that band, Teddy Adestal. Right. And it's me, Jojo Badenius, Rune Gustafsson is playing the first uh, lead, and uh, Pekka Poila is playing the fourth. And then it's Matt Swinding on bass on that one, and Ed Thickpen on drums. Ah, cool. And I think I'm very proud of that album. I don't know today, I, I, I can't understand how did we get that together. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> It but but he was good. your uh, sort of uh, your uh, mentor. Men mentor, yeah. Yeah, he was. And he, was Carson, a, he was. A, yeah. Yeah, he also has a very sort of a distinct own sound of the guitar. You can hear right away when it's Rune Carlson <laughs> playing. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, the, yeah. the last one I have, uh, sort of, just to to go chronologically, is is this one. Uh, yeah. The ship. <laughs> Yes, I I have it, but I have another cover of yeah, it. Yeah, another cover. Uh, let's see if I. Uh, if I can find it. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. I know I found it. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Just the, the same. One. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a fantastic record. It's it's uh, a little bit laid back, and yeah, you, you do a uh, uh, sort of a, a take on uh, Julbrook's machine or Harvest's yeah. uh, Harvest machine on it. It's it's. Uh, much more laid back. What? What? How was the recording of this? But because Lee Shipper didn't do anything else, did he? No, he, he was a scientist. He he was studying uh, some scientists. I don't know. 
uh, where what to study. Okay, I think there's the funk physicist is called. <laughs> is, funky is, funky. Um, I know his daughter contacted me because uh, Lee is not living any longer, sad to say. Okay, but. Uh, so uh, and uh, but I didn't find her, and that's fantastic uh, piano player Art Lander. Okay, he's a very great uh, piano player. Ah, cool. And Christopher uh, Eklund is on tenor sax. He he, Christopher Eklund was the guy who actually knew uh, Lee Shipper, and he, he organized the whole recordings and. Um, but did Lee uh, did Lee sort of finance the record or was no it, it was Lasse Lasse Samuelsson okay Lasse Samuelsson okay yeah. um, and there's there's a, a trumpet player here that I've only heard in sort of free jazz uh, outfits uh, Ted Curson Curson Ted Curson yeah Kersom. yeah he he uh, he was. Uh, he was rather famous, but I, uh, I, he was not in the in the best shape when we oh, recorded. Okay, okay. I don't know what happened with, because it's if, if he got some kicks and so on. Okay. I don't know if we listened to it, but maybe yeah. he, he didn't have the, his best days on, oh, the, on those okay. recordings. No. Yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a cool sort of artifact uh, once again it's not a record that uh, you hear being talked about every day and i no. think it's a wonderful record yeah it's good yeah i i'll, I'll you you had this also um yeah you it before we started uh, recording uh, yeah t t tell us about it's, it's actually, story. It's it's actually two records do we have one volume one and volume two yeah i have volume two also uh yeah take it, it, take, take the back side the flip side you see that that's the only picture with uh, johnny nash and bob marley okay. okay in in the in the garden behind the house they were staying at ah uh, so that's um Fantastic! It's it's uh, the film score for uh, "Want So Much to Believe," which yes. was the title of uh, or the movie that uh, John and Ash wrote the music for, and uh, it's a very memorable recording. <laughs> 1971, yeah. we recorded that. Okay, and uh, so early. And it was Christina Colin, fantastic. Christine, yeah, and and Niklas Wahlgren is very young. He, he, if you see a young guy, it was four or five years. And it's Niklas Wahlgren, her son. That's awesome. So he has a very famous uh, sister, Penilla Wahlgren. Yeah, <laughs> in Sweden, so, she is very. Uh, she's the most famous person now in Sweden. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah, uh, and her children also. They are, like, yeah, they are yeah. everywhere. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, you had did did uh, Marley uh, work on this recording, or was he here for uh, another purpose? He, uh, it was like this. Uh, John and Ash came here with John Rabbit Bandrick, the piano player, who yeah. later on uh, played twenty seven years with the Who. And yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, it was uh, da Danny Sims. He was his uh, manager, and there was uh, uh, Jordan or something. I don't remember his name. Fred Jordan. Okay. Uh, he was a ranger, and Johnny Nash wrote the music for the movie, the music score, and we recorded in the studio, and we recorded with the Swedish radio orchestra as well. Hey. And then uh, John and Ash noticed, uh, oh, this these are good session music, session musicians. So okay. uh, he wanted to he did some uh, demos for his forthcoming album, oh. and then suddenly he called me up and said, "Come to the house. I'm going to show you some new music for my new album." And I went to the house and he played a vinyl for me and said, "What do you think?" And and I said it was wasn't hundred percent, but I said it, it sounds very interesting, Johnny. I'm going to bring this guy here. He's going to teach you how to play this new music. And two days later, he, he came to Stockholm, and that was Bob Marley. 
Ah. And he stayed in the, in the cellar, in the, in, the, in the bottom of the house. He had the mattress and um, uh, he was sitting. There are small things. We, uh, I don't remember everything uh, from the recording, some, some bits. And, um, uh, but the engineer, he said, you played together, you sat together with Bob Marley and play acoustic guitar. And <laughs> so it must, be. he was there and we talked very much and he was very silent. He didn't say very much. And, and on the sessions were Titio's father, Amadou Yar, was yeah. re recordings and uh, Reebok Kwakiba, an African uh, exactly. percussionist. Yeah. So there's a lot of, Musicians playing on that album. Excellent, as always. Excellent musicians. And Reebok, you did a, um, he did a solo record on, was it Philips or something like that that you played on also? Yeah, um, uh, together with Bobo Stenson and, and Lofa Andersson. They, they helped them arrange African music. And it, I think that's, that's, it's a very good record as well. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, one that is, way high up on my want list when it comes to records from Sweden. Uh, it's an amazing record, but you never see it. It's like, yeah. do you have it? Maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. I have so many red vinyls, <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Oh. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's an awesome record. Um, do you have any, do you have any, um, uh, any records that you want to show? I don't have any, any um, more that I brought what? forward. What was that? Once again, do you have any? Do you have any records that you want to to uh, show and talk a little bit about? Yeah, do you know this one? No. <laughs> the Kaiser Kaiser Twins. Kaiser Twins, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, the guys are. It's a twin. Um, they are twins. Yeah. Walter and Peter Kaiser are living in Switzerland, and they play together with. Uh, Walter mm, played with uh, Andreas Vollenweider. Yeah, he's a very famous musician in in Switzerland. Yeah, and uh, they had listened to me, and uh, I'm playing on this record, and uh, it's fantastic. It, it's a little fusion and little. Yeah, uh, I I can I can take it. This one I I play on the Kaiser Twins and. Uh, uh, was fantastic because uh, they play with uh, Andreas Vollenweider and uh, I'm playing on a I re also written a tune on, on this album actually when we uh, I wrote it when we recorded it as well and uh, that led to I play on, on uh, one Andreas Vollenweider and I found that yeah this one great and, uh, record yeah it's fantastic album and I during the intermission now I found what the original one <gasps> <laughs> it's played how, how much do you think uh, if if somebody takes more than 20 kronos for this one don't buy it yeah <laughs> but how, how much is it worth now you think I don't know maybe uh, 10,000 kroner uh, Swedish crowns I, I heard I heard even more, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it might be. I'm a little bit like, uh, yeah. It's been a while since I looked um, for one. Yeah. It, it, I know. I, I I found actually some some things we have talked about. I found some records. Do you have this one? No, no. Because on this this is an album of Johnny Nash. It's a compilation album. Okay. Uh, my my merry-go-round is called and that is one tune called uh the first track on the b-side is love is not a game and that's okay. taken from the movie so ah. he talked the recording so ah. play but, uh, but it doesn't say that uh, we are playing the swedish musician is that musicians on that tune is the men from the jungle okay <laughs> the men from the jungle that's that's Stockholm, <laughs> Europa <laughs> film, and then I, I told told you about um, John Rabbit Bunrick. He was playing with the sessions, yep. and uh, he later on played with uh, uh, the Who for 
27 years, I think. Yeah. He was a sideman. But he also recorded two solo albums, and I have them. Ah, cool. It's, it's yeah. a Dark Saloon, and I, both me and Ola Brunk is playing on this one. Um, let's see which tune. Uh, I have to read Janne Schäfer, Ola Brunke, and Mike Watson. Special Woman is, is the tune. You, if you can find it with John Rabbit Bundick, we play on it. I'll, I'll, it's, I'll... It's, a, it's a good recording. And we also play Dark Saloon, we play on, on Ola Brunkit as well. Dark Saloon and Special Woman, two, the two tracks. That's awesome. Yeah. And let's see if I play on this one. I don't. Here's another one of, of Rabbit, ah. Broken Arrows. But I don't think I play on this one. So. Yeah, and I found another record that I recorded. If we talk about, uh, we talked about Lorde Kulgoski, and we talked about uh, Mats Winding. I also played with a Norwegian drummer, Paul Tovson. Ah, okay. You have that record? No, no. no? He is fantastic jazz drummer, but we recorded... He recorded, also recorded one of my uh, songs, Andrea Doria. Okay. And it's a vocals with, from Tor Andresen. Mm -hmm. He's okay. a very good uh, Norwegian singer. And uh, actually, um, Paul Tovsen is not a uh, pop rock drummer. He is a jazz drummer. Okay. Uh, but he plays fantastic well on this one. And... Uh, I play on, uh, see, uh, Andrea Doria. I, I don't see if I play on another track. It, it's mostly uh, Norwegian musicians and uh, called Sven Dag Haug on keyboard. And yeah. Peter Jung is playing as well Okay. Uh, on this one. And uh, yeah, it, it was fantastic. To play on when, when was it recorded? Was was it in the eighties? Uh, 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 see if I can find here. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eighty six. Eighty six. Okay. Yeah. But before that, I, I have we talked about when my recordings with. Uh, in uh, in Hollywood, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> with uh, the the guy can, from you uh, can start, and then I can I can show you some very special things if you want to. Yeah, I, uh, uh, you you because you played with uh, uh, the brothers from Toto. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. But before that, I I had to go to Montreux and play with the. Um, CBS All Stars. Yeah, that was. I bet that was awesome. You played with. Uh, was it Billy Cobham on on drums? Yeah, I can I can tell you the set yeah. the lineup. Yeah, Bob James on keyboard. He was also the conductor of the whole and arranger of the whole thing. George Duke on keyboard, Billy Cobham on drums, Ralph McDonald on percussion, Steve Kahn on guitar. Yeah. And Eric Gale also on guitar, and me on guitar. Stan Getz on saxophone, Woody Shaw on trumpet, Alfonso Johnson on bass, Alfonso Johnson from uh, Weather Report, yeah. Dexter Gordon saxophone, uh -huh. Benny Golson uh, saxophone, Hubert Laws, he played uh, flute, uh -huh. Bobby Humphrey also played flute, yeah. Thijs Van Leer, he played with We were. Me and Thijs van Leer, we were the only Europeans. Yeah. Thijs van Leer came from a group called Focus. Yeah. And then also Maynard Ferguson, trumpet player from England. Hmm. And we recorded a double album. It's, I mean, it's it's a story like you, you, I couldn't never believe it. I, I have it. Oh, here. shit. 
You have it? No, no, I've never seen it. Uh, You've never, never seen, seen it. it? No. Uh, it, it's vol this is volume one, and it's also volume two. Ah. But I I play on the first track on this one. Uh, the first track is called Mont Montreux Summit, uh, and it's the opening first. The first soloist is um, Stan Getz, and the second one is Woody Shaw and me on the third one. And I also play on this volume two in Corner for Flutes. Okay. It's a tune for uh, from uh, Thijs van Leer. Ah. And uh, there were some, they recorded some uh, promotion albums. This is one. Shit. And uh, on this one, it's a tune from uh, Lonnie Smith, Herbie Hancock, Tony Williams, George Duke, Hillary, I don't know, Cedar Walton, Joe McLaughlin, Lips, I don't know who's that, Walt Bolden, Wilbert Longmire, uh, Mongo Santa Maria, Mark Colby, Richard T, keyboard. Okay. Yeah, no chauffeur. Whoa. It's <laughs> Hubert Laws, Arthur Blight, and Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea. And it's on I'm on I'm on that album. It's a compilation album. Uh, and awesome. this is also a compilation. Oh, where yes. It's fantastic. So it's I mean it's they did the, the yeah, I'm. I'm not. Yeah. This isn't live. I mean, I'm recording this. So before I post this on my channel, I have to buy all these records because everyone will be uh, at them right away when I, when I post this. So I have, <laughs> see if you can find it. <laughs> I have a little um, bit of time before. <laughs> yeah, and then the, that was uh, the ticket to recording in Hollywood, 1977, and I recorded my fourth album in in. Um, in a Larrabee studio in Hollywood. And the engineer was Rick Pekkonen. He recorded with Earth, Wind and Fire. And every, yeah. they recorded Earth, Wind and Fire in that studio as well. Cool. And the producer was Bruce Botnick, who recorded with The Doors. And then uh, uh, Bjorni Solin is playing on, on the album. And uh, Peter Robinson, like I told you before. Yeah. And uh, the the rest is Jeff Porcar on drums, and I asked Jeff Porcar if do you have an any bass play? Do you know any bass player? Yeah, my brother Mike. <laughs> yeah, on the place, and we had need a percussionist. We can have my father Joe, yeah. and then also Steve Porcar is playing uh, some synthesizer on one track. I play one one track, uh, and the name of it's Happy Feet. I oh. play with Mike, Steve, Jeff, and their father Joe Porcar. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's one of the few albums. And we did a couple of different covers of it. This is one. Yep, I've seen that. Fantastic. That looked that looked like a, a Thies van Leer um, cover. I, I think that Thies van Leer had a solo record with uh ear that's holding yeah. out his hand, something like that. Is it yeah. the same I artist? Yeah, it's the same. I I was offered to buy it, the original, ah. and I refused that. I should have done that. I, that's, <laughs> but they said the, the cover wasn't good enough, so I had to remake it. And I did. I went over just to make a photo session in New York. Okay. And this, this then it's in the same album. And uh, the photographer is uh, Norman Seas. Okay. And he is a very famous uh, uh, photographer, and uh, uh, he was uh, together with uh, Tyrone Power's daughter. She okay. was fant beautiful, and she was uh, pregnant at that time. I remember, okay. and uh, well, the session was in in uh, New York, and it became so. This is the official cover of, of that one. Both are, are, are awesome, but very different. Like You're very different, yes. Extremely different. <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 like when you when you're a record manager, you can find out some things, and suddenly you you change everything, and then, yeah. yeah.
Uh, I'm, and then I ask, do you have this one? Nope. Nope. <laughs> awesome cover. Yeah. Uh, this is a very special story. Uh, I think it's from ni 1985. Okay. And it's just after we had recorded 1982, I recorded Banan Contact with Lekki Banana Band. Yeah. And uh, a guy, no, he's, uh, he was an actor called Pali Garanditsky. He worked at the Dramat and the Swedish national dramatic scene. He asked me if I could write music for The Wizard of Oz. And uh, the the li lyrics are written from uh, Barbara Lingley, and is a very famous Swedish author. Yeah. And I wrote the music, and that was on Dramat and the Swedish uh, best scene <laughs> for that. Yeah. And we recorded it, and uh, it was a very good uh, play, actually, and uh, it was very well played, and and. Uh, some of the uh, actors are still living and, and working, and I know that uh, 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 Magnus Erner, he's still working at the Dramaten. Okay. And um, uh, Kiki Bromberg, she, she was total. She is st also still at Dramaten. Okay. So it's fantastic, yeah. Who was uh, who was playing on it more than? Uh, uh... It's not not so many well known. Uh, Dorothy was played by Astrid Sefa, and then uh, I don't think it's Per Holmberg played played the lion. Okay. Yeah. And and um, not not so many uh, famous actors actually, but. Uh, the play is fantastic. Yeah, I'll it's, check it out. I mean, the story is, yeah, the story is fantastic, and it's it's very funny to have worked on on the Sweden, Swedish Swedish and scene yeah. and make an, a musical. Yeah. We work. We try to work. Out, we did a musical, um, La Soba and Me, with the Electric Banana Band. Okay, which which is uh, an. Uh, uh, an it's a sort of I don't electric banana band is not the real band. It's it's a form of modern art. Okay, because <laughs> because uh, Lasoba is an is a fantastic. Uh, is a painter and and doing a lot of artworks and uh, he write the lyrics and I write the music and we did a musical in uh, in the uh, Malmö Opera. Ah. 19 uh, 2006 okay and uh we it has been going around in sweden and we try to make it develop it into new forms when we we're working on it still okay. <laughs> we like <laughs> it very much and in, it's a, a lot of the lyrics are about the climate how we're gonna okay. how we're gonna make it to survive on the uh, earth actually so it's very important lyrics yeah. and the text is and I like I write music so everybody can sing along. Uh, but not contact Swamp and yeah, yeah, yeah. Me Maya, my Priya Maya. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, there's always been I think I feel like in your music, even if you play instrumental music, there's always some kind of humor. You always seemed like in interviews and uh, and uh, in texts that I've written uh, like a very happy guy is that uh, something that you have uh, used uh, creatively or is it just does it come natural you know the, 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 my music do you yeah yeah you, it your music I, I feel like there's a sort of a humor in it like uh, yeah not like you a mean humor, like like Frank Zappa had humor but yeah uh, the... I've written a couple of songs that are very, very uh, serious, actually, and not maybe it's not so happy because, uh, like a newborn child, 
which yeah. is, is dedicated to my brother who committed suicide in 1983. And I also wrote a tune called, called uh, about the climate called Silent Spring, which is uh, the title of Rachel Carson's book about, and it's, it's a very, uh, uh, I can't describe those songs as happy. They're very thoughtful and uh, not sad, especially, but, but they're very, uh, Silent Spring, I'm very happy, I'm very proud of that song because it's very heavy and it's very, uh, it's called, uh, I try to find the English word for yeah. it. Uh, 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 I, can, I can say this with Öde Smettat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, doom, yeah, yeah, like very doomy. Doom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm. And, uh, but most most of the tunes I I'm uh, when I'm in a very good mood I'm mostly in a very happy mood so yeah. then I write new music and, and uh, get inspired by things happening around me and I also get inspired by the nature I wrote a tune called Norilam which I like very yeah. much myself and it was inspired by a tour I did in the north of Sweden okay and. Uh, so I get inspired of a lot of things, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm, I thought of a, a question I had um, before, um, totally unrelated. But do you know, uh, I've talked with a lot of friends and, and uh, people on this channel about um, the sort of exchange uh, of musicianship uh, in the late or early uh, to mid 70s. There seemed to be a lot of uh, people going from countries like Poland and England and stuff like that here uh, recording music. I mean, Don Sherry went to Sweden. Were there... Uh, why is my question? Why did so many international musicians come here to play? Uh, was it the government that allowed them to come and and uh, or was it the musicians that wrote them here? Uh, do you have any theories on that? Uh couple of I think this the musical tradition in Sweden is very highly the, yeah. the, we had the uh, Lasse Gullin, we had Jan Johansson we had Arne Domnerus Rune Gustafsson a lot of Eje Tillin who worked in, in uh, Austria, Austria. Uh, and it's always been a tradition and then I think what Abba did was gave a name of Sweden. They, they put Sweden on the on the music map. Yeah, yeah. And uh, after that came uh, Max Martin and uh, Avicii and all the things. So and many uh, and with the, some of the guys, I <laughs> I know Stan Getz married a Swedish yeah. woman and uh, Dexter Gordon as well. So. Yeah. So maybe some of the jazz musicians found their Swedish girlfriends in Sweden. Maybe. Um, maybe it's, it's a, I don't say it, it was that reason, but maybe <laughs> it's an extra thing. And uh, It feels like we had a, 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 or always have had a, a great sort of music tradition. Um, and maybe that is something that attracted a lot of, of the, musicians to come here and to be able to play uh, to an audience that was sort of e easy to or recipient to to yeah. take in their music especially on the jazz scene i mean and if we go back to the 50s and stuff like that uh, i guess that a lot of of like miles and those guys were going from new york with that sort of cold cultural climate to sweden where they were treated like kings uh, so maybe maybe it's something that comes from that. I don't know. Yeah, but I think the the government or the the cultural uh, uh, the, uh, they have uh, <clears throat> in Sweden the 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 guys and women who d decides what the cultural development in Sweden has has not always noticed what's happening on no. the floor. No. So uh, I'm very, 
scared of maybe that the communal schools for music or they, they shut them down oh, yeah because we have it's very important to to keep the tradition alive yeah and uh, so I played a lot of with young musicians and just the other day I played with these couple of young musicians in rainbow was fantastic and oh. and there's so much music happening in Sweden everybody wants to they they've seen which they've seen ABBA, they've seen Roxette, and they've seen a lot of things that Europe also yeah. that could happen international. So, so it gives them hope. It's like when you, if you're talking to sports, ice hockey. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of Swedish hockey players yeah. who can find their living on, on, uh, and also football players. Not, not maybe not so many football players, but. I think uh, it's better to, uh, when they go to the ice ho- the hockey players, and yeah. it's a, l- s- a little bit similar with the uh, music, and uh, except for it's a totally different area. But no, but, but yeah, it's a yeah, little, it's a good little, com- You can compare compare it a little bit, I yeah, think. And we, it's very important that we just don't be build ice hockey arenas, and we that we build. The concert halls and open up for clubs to people to play at and yeah. to together. It's that's very very important. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll uh, I'll wrap this up here because I don't want to take more of your time. It's been uh, such an honor to to yeah. to talk to you. It's insane. One of the sort of I mean best days of my life. Really, yeah. And, yeah, and before I, I uh, uh, forget it, uh, I, 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 my mom said uh, to say hello to you. I think she had a crush on you uh, back in the day. So, so I, I, she said like, I'm 38 years old, and she said like, you have to to tell Yana to to. Uh, then I said hi. So yeah, now I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> say hello back. Yeah, and I'm I also want, uh, I'm I'm forming a new group, a techno techno group with oh. uh, a Swedish actor, Christopher Walter. Okay, and uh, a guy from uh, Dramaten. His name is Jakob Hirdval. And we are calling ourselves Night Agents. Okay. And we're coming with new music. It's totally different from what I've done before, but huh? it's always interesting to develop yeah. my the music and see what's happening. So that's what's coming in the future. And in the spring, in April, I'm going on the tour in Germany and also one concert in Zurich and one in Austria and Wien, Wiener Stadthalle. Cool. Uh, and that's with ABBA music. But I, at that time, I'm also going to have uh, doing uh, some tunes on my own. So okay. it's uh, I'm doing arenas in in uh, Germany, and Austria, and Zurich and Switzerland. So yeah, I hope if you have some friends in Germany, yeah, you definitely can say hello to each other. Yeah. Def- definitely. Uh, so go go check uh, check out uh, Janne when he's uh, playing. It's going to be so worth it. And if you're in Sweden, pick up the book if you haven't read it because it's a fantastic book. You you Thank should. You I much. mean you. I bet you 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 you. I bet you have stories to fill another book, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Anything. Yeah, we can. I can maybe. We will see what happens. Yeah, we we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, next year the the. I feel uh, I'm celebrating the 50 years for my first vinyl, and I'm gonna release that as well. That, yes. That's gonna be awesome. I'm I'm the yeah. first in line to buy it. I, I yeah. tell you that. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you very much.